Russia's war against Ukraine has now lasted more than two and a half years, fueling international calls for a political settlement. But the peace terms remain unacceptable to Kiev and Moscow. Putin and Zelensky have publicly said they are open to talks, but neither has given up on their long-standing goals or on winning, says Rajan Menon, a political analyst at The Guardian who has visited Ukraine four times during the war. Could a combination of war, weariness and fear of escalation pave the way for negotiations that will end the war? I am skeptical, the author writes. Menon notes that morale among Ukrainians, either at the front or in the rear, has not dropped to a level that leaves Zelensky no choice but to end the fighting and seek peace on Russia's terms. Nevertheless, the Kursk operation is further evidence that Kyiv remains determined to continue the fight. Indeed, Zelensky and his commanders believe that these gains can be consolidated if Britain and the United States allow Ukraine to use their long-range missiles to strike Russian airfields, the political scientist adds. Earlier, Ukraine's ambassador to India, Alexander Polistruk, said that Kiev wants New Delhi to moderate the talks and use its ties with Russia to bring Moscow to the negotiating table. Polistruk added that Ukraine has offered India to hold a second peace summit by November 2024 to end the war. However, it is unclear whether New Delhi will agree to this. According to Bloomberg, some of Ukraine's allies are starting to talk about how the fight against Russia's invasion might end, raising concerns in several other Western capitals that these efforts could lead to Kyiv being forced into a premature ceasefire. As part of their discussions of strategy for the next year, officials are more seriously gaming out how a negotiated end to the conflict and an off-ramp could take shape, according to people familiar with the matter who asked for anonymity to discuss private deliberations. Negotiations to end the fighting will have to resolve a key issue, how to ensure that Ukraine does not become vulnerable to future Russian attack, while reassuring its allies that they will not be drawn into a direct conflict with the Kremlin. Any talks will also have to overcome the bitter legacy of the Minsk agreements, which were agreed upon after the seizure of Crimea in 2014. The article says, one European defense official also said European governments shared concerns that Putin would exploit Western uncertainty after the deal was struck. Some allies believe the time between the US election in November and the presidential inauguration next January could provide a window of opportunity, with the ongoing Biden administration having more political leeway to strike a deal. The trajectory of the military conflict in the next two months will be quite steep. In the basic scenario, military actions will continue after the inauguration. But the likelihood of alternative scenarios is also high, the Bloomberg source added. The number of Ukrainians and Russians killed or wounded in the two and a half years of war has reached approximately one million people. At the same time, the number of civilian deaths remains unknown since more than 8,000 people died during the Russian capture of Mariupol alone, according to Human Rights Watch. The Wall Street Journal reports that a confidential Ukrainian estimate at the beginning of the year put the number of Ukrainian servicemen killed at 80,000 and wounded at 400,000. Western intelligence estimates of Russian losses vary, with some putting the number of dead at nearly 200,000 and wounded at around 400,000. One of Vladimir Putin's motivations for launching the invasion in 2022 is to increase Russia's population by absorbing Ukrainians. According to government and demographer estimates, as a result of Russia's invasions and occupation of Ukrainian territory over the past 10 years, Ukraine has lost at least 10 million people to occupation or as refugees. Putin has long declared solving Russia's chronic demographic decline as a priority, and the Kremlin has since launched a campaign to russify the occupied territories, including kidnapping children and handing out Russian passports to Ukrainians. Modern Ukraine was once part of the Russian Empire, and Putin has repeatedly said he seeks to return the country to Moscow's rule. He denies Ukrainian identity and statehood, and claims that Ukrainians are part of the Russian nation. The war has had a devastating impact on Russia's domestic demography and labor market. 
Since the full-scale invasion began, more than 600,000 Russians have fled the country. These are mostly young professionals who could afford to move to other countries and start a new life. Russia's attack has had a catastrophic impact on Ukraine's population. The 2001 census counted 48 million residents. That number had fallen to 40 million in early 2022 before Russia invaded, according to Ukrainian demographers and government officials. Since the war began in February 2022, more than 6 million people have fled Ukraine and Russia has seized more land, according to the United Nations, reducing the total population in Kiev-controlled territory to 25 to 27 million. Alexander Gladun, a research fellow at the Tuka Institute of Demography, believes that before the full-scale invasion, there were 42 million people in Ukraine and after, about 29 million.